Well, I'm going to show you how uh, I sharpen a draw knife. But first, I better show you a few a few draw knives here. Uh, one of my one of my favorite. Where's one of my favorite ones? One of my favorite ones uh, right here. My brother-in-law found it in a in a junk store, and uh, it's a uh, a bevel up uh, or bevel down knife. I use it with the with the bevel down, and the reason I do that is because the blade, the back of the blade, is in line with the handles, and so when you use it, you put it out, put it on the wood, sits on the bevel, your wrists feel real comfortable. Whereas if I tried to turn it over and use it bevel up, I'd have to move my wrist down right like this, and and it's I mean you can use it like that, but it's just not just not as comfortable. Whereas uh, this knife right here, this knife right here, the back of the knife is not in line with the handles with the tangs. It's canted right like that, and so if I tried to use it with the bevel down. Then I'd have to do the same thing with that one with the bevel up. I'd have to move my wrist in an uncomfortable position. Whereas when I when I lay it with the bevel up on its back, it just lays nice and uh, flat with my wrist in a comfortable position. So those would be the two knives that you would find uh, out there mostly at antique stores or junk stores, flea markets, or or, or whatever. Would be those two shapes. Then you would find ones that have curves to them in two planes, and uh, you know I've heard been in discussions about what that means, and I don't know that anybody really really concluded it. But one thing that's interesting on this bevel up, bevel down knife right here, if I lay it on a flat surface and it lays on its bevel. The two arcs counteract each other, and the blade sits flat on that. I guess they planned that. I don't know, but it's pretty neat. Uh, there's a lot of brands out there. You know, when you're picking out a knife, just say, you know, obvious things. Are the handles good? Are the handles tight? I mean, you can remake all that stuff, but it'd be nice if you could find one. What? Has some numbskull been banging on the back of it with a hammer like they do on about half of them? I'm not, I'm not sure what they were doing, but uh, this one's been banged on, so we got to straighten it, straighten it out. Um, you know, does it have enough blade left? If it doesn't, they might have ground back past the, the, the temper on it. Uh, how much rust was on it? How much pitting is on, is on, is on the knife? Uh, you know, and just generally, how does it feel? I like knives that are between six and eight inches long. My favorite being about a seven inch knife. These, these are eight inches right here, which are real, real common. When they get a little longer, 10 and, and, and longer, they, they're just a little bit too long for me, but a lot of people like them, like them like that. So uh, anyway, a lot of brands, like I said, this one's a Witherby, uh, a real common brand out there, a good knife. I use this one a lot. This one right here, this heavy one here is a Barton. Uh, another very good name in, in old draw knives. But just because they don't have a Barton or a Witherby name doesn't mean that, that they aren't a good knife. This, this, uh, uh, I believe it's a key call, I believe. Maybe it's a tear call. Tear call, that's what it is. Uh, not the only one I've ever seen. And it's, it's, it's a great knife. Pex Toe is another one. Uh, gosh, I mean, every one of these has a, has a different, different name on it. So, uh, this New Haven Tool Company right here. So anyway, so there's there's a whole lot of lot of good good knives out there. But when you get it home, then what do you do with it? And that's what that's what I'm going to show you. And I've got a knife here that needs redoing. Which one is it? It's uh, this one. This one right here. And uh, so the back of it. I don't know how well that you can see the back, but there's a little bit of rust. A little bit of pitting back in here and that I'm going to have to get rid of uh, but generally the, the handles are in uh, are in good shape and the knife is oh, my train. so the first thing that I'm going to have to do is get the back flat and shiny just like you would on a on a, on a chisel only you got a much bigger surface there and you, as you see like I pointed out a minute ago we got a little bit of rust over here and uh, a little bit of pitting. Hopefully, it's not going to be not going to be too bad. But so instead of having to remove the metal on the whole entire back trying to flatten it, I'm going to speed things up a bit, and I'm going to hollow grind 
that back just a little bit. Now, the way I'm going to do that, is I'm going to put it up here on the, the grinder right like that. Now, I'm going to use this little piece of wood here, and I'm going to use this to grind the bevel and to grind the back. And this was something that when Tim Manny was down here in the shop helping me, uh, he made it. He had seen it on Pete Galbert's blog, and then later on I found out that uh, another guy who's worked with me some, Andy Jack, had already invented it, and he just never told me about it because I used to freehand it, and he didn't think I needed it. So, But anyway, Tim's the one that made it, that made it for me. It works great. All it is is just a little piece of wood, as you can see, rounded in that direction and rounded in that direction. And then I've put two rare earth magnets in here, and I just pop it right down on there, slide it up to where I think it might work. Let's see here. And now I'm going to see where it's hitting. Yeah, so it's hitting right there, which is going to just going to work out good. Uh, you can freehand that if you want. It's just a little safer to to do it like this. Now those rare earth magnets won't won't hold it under that pressure. So I'll add a. Uh, this is a hundred grit stone, I think. Put that up there and let's check it again. Just make sure everything's okay. And yeah, I'm hitting not quite in the middle, but I can't quite get it there. I can't quite get it up there. So let's, uh, let's see if I can do this without hurting myself. See where we got. Now I'm going to spread it out and try to get on up. Just get a little higher on that knife. And I'll do it right there. See that I'm grinding on the side of the on the corner of the wheel, and that's because the handles won't won't uh, fit across this right here. So I just go ahead and just grind it on the on the uh, corner there. I'd love to be able to get down here, but uh, I don't think I can I can get the knife. I don't think I can get it to cut that low. There we go. That's what we want. Wrong way. Not thinking too much here. 
go the wrong way. I guess we can go over and take it to the stone and uh, give it a try. So if you're doing a, a bevel up knife or a bevel down knife, the, the steps are still the same up to the last few steps. So, uh, so you're still going to flatten the, flatten the back on, 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 on any knife that you've, uh, that you've got. Now, I'm going to start out with, with sandpaper, and that's because I don't have a coarse stone. If you've got a good coarse diamond stone, then I would, I'd prefer to use it, but I, I don't own one. They're pretty expensive. Uh, I don't particularly like sandpaper, not that it doesn't do a good job. You can sharpen all your tools with it. It's uh, that you're just throwing away stuff, you know. But, but for this right here, I've got some 250 grit sandpaper, and uh, this is that's the granite slab and I've just got it, as you can see, glued up on the edge of it so the handle's clear. Uh, and it's nice and heavy so it just sits right there. So what I'll do first is just, so I can see uh, a lot of rust coming off on this. So I'm going to go through a couple of pieces of sandpaper. Now it's real important that you keep the knife flat here. I don't want to roll it or anything. So let's see what we got here. So as you can see, I've gotten real lucky. With just that little bit, I'm already all the way out to the edge, except right there on that corner. And I've never found the use for a corner of a draw knife, so. I grind them off anyway. All they do is just, they, they're real good for cutting your fingers. Uh, so uh, uh, I believe I can start working on up my, my stones. I believe I'm finished with that sandpaper. Boy, it did, it did quick work. I like that. I would have worked a long time on an 800 grit water stone. To... So I've got my 800 grit water stone here and uh, uh, you know the, the water stones are soft so they get hollowed out, especially the uh, uh, the lower grit ones. You get on up to the 8,000 grit, and they're a little harder. But these are these are fairly soft. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna flatten it first, right here on this flattening rock. So you can see that. You can see I'm hitting on the outside just as I thought. It's low right here in the center, so I've got to get it all the way down here. Ah, there we go. Looking good. Okay, I'm gonna. So there's a lot of ways to lock your water stones in. Uh, you know, most people use a, a, a block of wood and uh, two ends right here and drive a wedge in between it, and it just locks it in just great. And I never get around to build one of those. I kept meaning to. And one day I just set it on this piece of sandpaper and it stayed there. So I thought, well, that's all I need to do. So we'll see if it still stays there. I don't know. And uh, let's get a little water on that and wash that a bit. Okay. So I believe we're nice and clean, and flat, and everything else that we need. So. Uh, one thing that you might want to do, you can take a, a marker and just run it down the edge. It, and that way we can see if the uh, 
the water stone's cutting all the way to the edge. So try to use the whole stone so you don't hollow it out. Or don't hollow it out very fast because you're going to hollow it out. so fast, I'm second guessing myself on it. Okay. So I'm going to put away the, the 800 grit. back here and uh, make sure I get all that 800 I want to move to a 1200 grit water stone and the bottom of it doesn't doesn't really matter but I want to wash all the 800 grit all the grit from the 800 grit stone off so it doesn't contaminate my uh, 1200 grit stone but I am going to have to go back to the trough and wash this flattening because I don't have to flatten my 1200 grit. Okay, so I've got my 1200 grit stone in place and I've flattened it. And as you can see, it's the same color as the 800 grit stone, which I wish they hadn't done that. Uh, so now I'll be just trying to remove the 800 grit scratches on the back. And uh, that, that's the name of the game right there is uh, each stone removes the the grit from the stone uh, the scratches from the stone before it and sometimes when I get on up the stones I find I can hold it better if I do pattern sometimes not okay let's get this thing wiped off and I'm gonna get out my hand lens A seven power hand lens and uh, I can see a few scratches from the there's still a few scratches from the 800 grit 800 grit stone Surely that got it right there.
You can also see the pitting. And there is a little bit of pitting right down here. I can't see it with the naked eye, but I can uh, but I can see it with the with the hand lens. And uh, uh, so I probably won't be able to get that little bit of the knife back there sharp. If that's all there is, then I'll let it be. But yeah, it looks good. Maybe maybe just right out here on this far edge. I think I'm having trouble. I think the knife might be. It's, it's where the, it's got a sweep in, it's curved, and I'm not keeping it flat out there. But this should do it right here. Okay, that, that certainly ought to, ought to have that taken care of. So now I'll get everything washed up, and I'll switch to my uh, 8,000 grit stone.